Hello and welcome to this short video on cost behaviour. During the video we'll be looking at variable, semi-variable and fixed costs. Ok, when we're looking at cost behaviour, we are looking to identify the way in which costs alter according to the changes in the level of their output or activity of the business. If the business is in manufacturing, we are focused on the changes in costs according to the quantity of items produced and if it's in the service industry, we're looking at changes in the costs according to the amount of services we actually provide to our customers. So there are three main ways that costs can behave. You've got fixed costs, you've got variable costs, and you've got semi-variable costs. So what we're going to have a look at first of all is a mobile phone and look at it in a general day-to-day -day, uh, person's life, how cost behavior impacts you. So if we took this mobile phone and we had a contract that was say £30 a month and inside that package we had unlimited minutes, unlimited text and unlimited data. So it didn't ha matter how much we use that phone, we would always pay £30. This is can be identified as a fixed cost because if we use that phone, we have it plugged in um, on charge all the time, constantly on YouTube, on Instagram, searching the web etc. We will still ha only pay £30. In contrast, a variable cost is one that will change according to your output or your usage. So on pay as you go, if we topped it up with £10 of credit, every time we use the internet, we will get charged a set amount of money. Every time we made a call, it might be 20p per call per minute. Therefore, if we used it for two minutes, that would be 20p times two. And a semi-variable cost is a mix between the two. So this is where you get a contract, but the data isn't uh, unlimited and the minutes aren't unlimited. So this could be, for example, the same £30 deal, but we've only got one gig of data and we've only got a thousand minutes. So if we use less than one gig of data and we use less than a thousand minutes, we won't pay any more. We'll still only pay £30. Even if we don't use that phone at all, we will still pay £30. So if we then go over the one gigabyte of data, we will then start paying on a pay-as-you-go rate for the extra. This, when you combine the two, this is known as a semi-variable cost. So let's have a look in terms of how that may, might impact a business. So council tax is a fixed cost. Now this is because the business has to pay the council tax, let's say the fee is £150, they have to pay that whether they are producing or not. Another example would be the rent on the factory itself. So if we're going to be producing, let's say, the iPhones in a factory, whoever we're paying our rent to will want their rent payment on time, regardless of whether we produced a thousand iPhones that month, a million iPhones, or none at all. They are going to want their payment because that is an agreed fee. So a fixed cost is one where it doesn't matter how much or how little we produce, we will still have to pay that cost. So producing the iPhone itself, all of the components inside that phone, including the plastic, the glass, the metal, the camera, the infrared sensors, the home button, etc. They are all classed as variable costs because we know exactly how much they cost. And every time we produce one, that goes up exactly the same amount. So if we were to, if let's say all the, all the parts inside the iPhone came to £150 in total, that would mean that every time we produce a phone, it's going to cost us another £150. Electricity is a good example of a semi-variable cost, and this is because the cost for electric is split up into two. You've got the variable rate, which is the, the price you pay per unit of electric, and then you've also got the standing charge, which you will pay regardless of usage. So therefore, a semi-variable cost, such as electric, has got both a fixed element and a variable element to it. So what we're going to do now is a bit of an activity. So I've given you some information. So I'm telling you that fixed costs are £2,000 per month, variable costs are £20 per unit, and now I've got three different questions for you. The first is asking, if we were to make 200 units uh, inside a month, what is the total cost of production? In relation to your answer that you got in, from, from question one, what is the total cost per unit? And then a third question is, if 400 units are made, what is the total cost of production? and also what is the unit cost. If you want to pause your screen now, have a go at them and press play when you're ready for the answers to be revealed. Okay, so the first question, we had 200 units 
and we have a variable cost of £20 per unit, so you times 200 by 20, which will give you a total variable cost of £4,000. You would then add on your, on your fixed cost of £2,000, giving you a total of £6,000. The second question then was asking you to calculate what that £6,000 was when split over the 2,000 units it was based on. So to calculate that, you would do the £6,000 total cost, divide it by the 200 units that it was based on, and that will give you an answer of £30 per unit. The final question then, this time we're making 400 units. So you take the 400, you times it by 20. That gives you a total variable cost of £8,000. Add on your £2,000 fixed cost, you've now got a total production cost of £10,000. We now need to work out what the unit cost is. So we take that £10,000 total cost, divide it by the 400 units it was based on, giving us a total, total unit cost or a price per unit of £25. So I've put on the screen another activity for you to have a look at. So I've got three questions on your screen again. And all we're wanting you to do this time is have a look at the information that's in front of you. You may need to do some calculations and then try and work out with the knowledge that you've got whether question one refers to a variable, semi-variable or a fixed cost and the same for the other two. So again, if you just want to pause your screen, have a go at them and press play once you're ready for the answers to be revealed. Okay, so the first one would, re would have required you to do some calculations. So we've got £2.50 per unit times the 10,000 units gives you a total cost of 25 grand. In the second part of the question, we had a price per unit of £12.50, but this time that was based on 2,000 units. The total production cost for that is again £25,000. So because the total production cost is £25,000, no matter whether we produce 10,000 items or 2,000 items, this is a fixed cost. So the second question provides you with details of both fixed costs and variable costs within uh, the information itself. So we've got costs of 25 grand are made up of five, a £5,000 fixed charge. So there's your fixed cost straight away. And then you've also got a bit more information telling you that it's £8 per unit. That's your variable element. Therefore, without any, any calculations needing to be done, you can see there's a fixed amount and there's a variable amount. Therefore, it is a semi-variable cost. The final question then, we've got £12,500 divided by 5,000 units. This gives you a unit price per unit of £2.50. We, de we then do the £20,000 divided by 8,000 units. And again, we get the same price per unit. Therefore, this is showing us that it's a variable cost. Now, what you will find is with a variable cost, the price per unit stays the same. So that will always be £2.50, no matter whether we produce just one or 10,000 items. It will always be £2.50. What will change is the total variable cost. It will go up as we make more. Whereas with a fixed cost, what you will notice is the total price always remains the same. However, the unit price of a fixed cost varies according to the amount we are actually producing. So in the first example, when we produced 10,000, the price per unit was all the way down at £2.50. However, when we only produce 2,000 units, the price per unit for the fixed cost um, increases dramatically all the way up to £12.50. Okay, thank you for listening. I hope you found that useful. And if you've got any questions about any of the content from today, comment below and we'll make sure we get back to you to help you out. Cheers.